let's go. It's Barrage the Barrage. I've got their names. I have absolutely no idea what Alan Cook is about to ask me. Alan. Hi, Nigel. It's great to see you outside uh, Downing Street today, but obviously we'd rather have you inside Downing Street. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my question to you is, I have a 22-year-old BMW that is compliant. I've got a 46-year-old 4.2-litre Jaguar that is only really good for driving between petrol garages, and that's compliant. How is this actually helping pollution, the ULES? Well, it's a good point. There was a 1934 Austin. Uh, in the car park here earlier, and that's compliant. Yeah, no, um, Colin, it, it is quite confusing for people, isn't it? Because wasn't it the case that actually we were told 20 years ago that diesel engines were better for the environment than petrol engines? So should we, Colin, should we trust anybody in national government? Um, I hope you can trust the government, but as far as this scheme goes, you're all missing, not missing the point. You need to focus on the point this is not about health. It's a tax-raising scam, and it's making it up as it goes along. I think that's right. Alan, I mean, given, given, given the case that you've just put, what else can it be? There is no other answer. It is a tax generation on the poor. On the poor, on the elderly, on the young, on the disabled, and many, many others. Um, right, Barbara, you're up next. Hello. Um, I just wanted to ask if you felt that property prices would be impacted um, on the outer boroughs with the ULS. Yeah, there will be an impact on property prices. How big it'll be, I don't know. They've been falling a tiny bit anyway. Um, but given that um, net migration into the country um, is running at 600,000 a year, the one thing I'm pretty certain of is that anything from the middle market down to the bottom end of the market isn't going to fall that far on a simple basis of demand and supply. But does it have an impact on a house here in Cuddham? Yeah, I think it possibly does. I think it possibly does. But I don't think it's going to be particularly injurious. Is it something you're fearful of? Um, yes, but um, I think the prices are dropping a bit in the area anyway, so you just have to wait and see, I suppose. Yeah, and there are many other economic factors, of course, that could affect house prices. Now, we did um, have the Conservative candidate for Mayor of London on the previous GB News programme, and asking a question here is somebody who's been campaigning on cars and car issues for, I can't think how many years, Howard Cox has been director of the Fair Fuel Alliance and he is running as London Mayor for Reform UK. So we've got plenty of balance on this programme. We've had, we've had Sadiq Khan, we've had Susan Hall. Howard has got a question for us. Hello, Nigel. Yeah, it's a very, very simple one. We've been treated like, well, I won't say the word because no, we've don't. Got, don't we do that. But let's face it, it's been dishonesty thrown at us all, from all directions by Sadiq Khan. Do you think he should be subject to an independent, a statutory public inquiry? Yes. Inquiry. Yes. Well, you know, you know the, idea, the idea that we can hold politicians to account for either breaking national manifestos or for not telling the truth um, is a difficult one. Um, you could argue that Boris Johnson, in the end, did lose his job as Prime Minister for not telling the truth. And when I went to Washington, D.C., the week after Boris had gone, the American media said, goodness me, if not telling the truth applied in Washington, there'd be no one left in Congress <laughs> at all. You know, you know, I think really the answer in any democracy is the only way you really satisfy this is by voting people out at the next election. And that really is the answer. Um, but I just, think, I just think tonight here on the rural outer edges of what is now the GLA, I think there's a different question here tonight. I just don't think these wards should be part of Greater London. I just think we're in a very, very different place. But, Howard, good luck with the campaign. Good luck to all the candidates in the campaign. You're in for a busy couple of months. This is November! Now, we are being balanced here, Colin, aren't we? We are. Very balanced. Good. Good, 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 good. Now, Conrad has a question for us. Conrad. Good evening, Nigel. If we've left the EU, why is Sadiq Khan using an EU directive for emissions? Right. Now, I thought if I was to come up with, you know, Euro 6 and Euro 2 and all the different criteria that have been agreed on emissions, uh, even though we've got Brexit, I might be seen as something of a conspiracy theorist. However, 
Conrad raises a very serious point here, that when we were members of the European Union, we signed up to a whole lot of actually quite long-term commitments that in many ways go beyond general elections. And I think, to me, and I'm going to get your answer in a moment on this, but to me, I think one of the slight disappointments of this is we haven't really broken away from EU law in the way that I think many Brexiteers had hoped. And goodness me, it is actually now seven years ago. Um, I have to come back to you, Colin, on this. Um, I mean, you know, Conrad's right. We did agree at a European level to a whole series of reductions. Um, and you could argue that Khan uh, is, is, is enforcing that. But a more, more general point, uh, we haven't really quite got the Brexit we voted for, have we? Uh, Nigel, I tend to agree with you. Um, it wasn't as clean, I think, as many as, of, as many of us were hoping. And the Northern Ireland situation in particular, I think, has long been a bugbear that has potentially held us back. So it hasn't been a fully satisfactory exit. Um, wished it had been cleaner myself. Do you fear that a Labour government, and it looks like we, I mean, if you believe the polls, or even half believe the polls, it looks like we're going to get Sir Keir Starmer. Oh, sorry, we can't call him Sir, sir anymore. He, he, he doesn't like that. Um, <laughs> but we're going to get Keir Starmer as Prime Minister. Do you fear that, you know, he might try and bring us back towards the EU? Well, we'd better call him Sir Keir Starmer then, haven't we? <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, it's a good one to, to win for the Conservatives next year. It's not looking great at the moment. A year's a long time. Never say never. Um, we start second favourites, I think, from here. But um, would Keir Starmer move us back into the EU? I don't know. He s says not. Do we believe him? No. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Conrad, you've raised a very important and, and a slightly complex point, but an important point. What's your thought on it? Well, I think we should have used some of the experts in this country, like Imperial College and King, King's College, and places like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Imperial College, you, of course, got all the modelling wrong when it came to the pandemic, um, and pretty much everything wrong. Uh, but mind you, you know, they were told, of course, to rewrite the report by the Deputy Mayor of London, and that is the cod science this is based on, and that makes me very, very angry. The final question goes... It better be a corker. It goes to Jackie. Yay! 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 Right. Do you think the current government are not opposing the ULES scheme more vigorously at the moment because they, they wish to use this with their manifesto in the next general election? Jackie, you are so cynical. Cynical. <laughs> about politicians, political figures. Do you know, I actually think that is absolutely... I believe that is absolutely right, that the Tory party will try and use this at the mayoral election. You'll be told that Susan Hall was opposed to all of this right from the word go, that the Tory party are to be believed on this, and I think it's very cynical. And my... I guess what really upsets me a bit on this is by then an enormous amount of damage will have been done. Yes. And, and, and I would like to have seen, I would love to have seen 143 being invoked because what that would have meant is that Khan would have had to challenge it through a judicial review. That would have taken months and months and months to come to court and we could have got into the next mayoral elections without this Euler's extension being in place. So I'm pretty angry. Clearly that's your view too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm a Tory through and through. Yeah. Wouldn't vote for him again. Yeah, no, it is very, 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 very disappointing.